what inspired you to get into acting? What matters is the story and how you craft it. You've answered a lot of the questions already with that one answer, so that's why. <laughs> I want it to continue to grow and I want it to kind of become, I suppose, a hub for any creatives in the filmmaking industry to connect and progress their careers, champion them. Um, like I say, in the future, I'd be silly not to accept interview requests from people like Leonardo DiCaprio, Morgan Freeman, etc. <laughs> Please subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on your favourite podcasting platform. Thank you. I'm Richard Williams. I'm the creator of Film Forums. Um, I'm the editor in chief of the platform as well. So tell me then, like, how it all came about. When did it start? It actually started just over four years ago now. Um, I had a completely different intention behind the site. Um, it's kind of evolved into something very different. So um, it, it started when IMDb, um, the Internet Movie Database, which a lot of people are familiar with, whether they're interested in film or not, um, they used to have um, message boards for um, movie um, enthusiasts, shall we say, like me, who watch a film and then they go on the actor's page or the, the film's page, um, go on the message boards and, and talk about, um, you know, the minutia of a film from 1960 or, um, you know, actors that most people have never heard of and you get into in-depth conversations. Anyway, um, and then IMDb shut that down. And so I thought, well, th there's thousands and thousands of people out there who, who still want that um, function, that facility. And so I was going to create um, a website um, that was going to replicate that experience. Um, and then someone beat me to it, actually, in the very same week. And they obviously had the same idea. And to be fair, they they did that brilliantly. I won't mention who, um, you know, that's that's fine. Um, and so I was left with this you know, pretty decent name, Film Forums, quite, you know, slick name and um, a website, which I didn't really know what, what to do with. So I was I, I sort of grew a bit of a social media following. My background's in, um, in my recent background in recent years is sort of digital marketing, content creation, that sort of thing. Um, and so, um, yeah, I built a little bit of a following, especially on Twitter. And then a director um, out of the blue kind of reached out to me and said, um, would you be interested in covering my film, interviewing me? Um, and I went, OK, yeah, I'm up for that. I'm going for that. I'd done a couple of interviews for work in the past, um, kind of small fry interviews, um, which I really, really enjoyed. I love talking to people. Um, so I did. I interviewed him. I was very, very nervous. I almost didn't even appear on camera because I'm actually quite shy, um, naturally. So um, I was thinking, oh, do I want to be on camera, do I not? And I thought, well, what's the worst that can happen? If it's a disaster, then it, it doesn't have to be published. It can be published in written form only, you know, just go with it. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed it. I had an adrenaline rush. Um, the guy was great. And the guy was actually Eric K. Myers. Um, and um, thankfully, he was a great guest, because I guess if he hadn't been a brilliant guest, then maybe I wouldn't have been so keen to do <laughs> other interviews, if that makes sense. Um, and so, yeah, I think within a, within a week of that, I did another interview as well. I can't remember if they reached out to me or vice versa. Um, and that went really well as well. And they, um, their own words were, they, they thought I was a seasoned film journalist, um, which is very, very flattering because I wasn't. It's only the second interview that I've ever done. <laughs> And so, um, yeah, I kind of thought, well, maybe I'm onto something here. I've got the, I feel like I've got many of the skills that I need to sort of um, maybe create a kind of platform for um, sort of filmmakers to talk about their films, promote themselves. Um, and I enjoy it. Um, and so that's kind of what I did uh, very much on my own until um, last um, summer um, when I decided to reach out online. In fact, my wife did. I was umming and ahhing as to whether to reach out online and, and share this platform and, and, and get other people involved. And then my wife um, posted on a local Facebook group um, asking whether there were as anyone who'd like to um, you know, contribute to a, a film website without actually giving too much more information than that. And they you know, got, got a bit of interest, got, some, got a couple of volunteers on, on board and they were fine, they were great. Um, and then ever since then, it's kind of snowballed really and more and more people have come on. And some of the people who have contributed to the, to the platform have been absolutely incredible. Um, I've become very, very firm friends with them. We've got um, video and sound editors, we've got writers, we've got presenters, um, all of whom are willing you know, to give their, their own time um, because mainly because they're passionate about film, they believe in what we're trying to achieve really. Um, I, I thought some of the volunteers might sort of come and go after you know, a couple of contributions, but many of them have been with us for months. And, and I keep asking, are you sure you, you, know, you, st sure, sure you still got the time? And you know, they're asking me for, for, for stuff to do because they're really keen to, to still be involved, which is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So how does it kind of manifest itself week on week? Um, yeah. yeah. What's your team putting together? 
Yeah, sure. So um, it kind of all, it's all underpinned by our um, video podcast. So we try and post one to two video podcast episodes a week on um, on YouTube. Um, and also um, usually one audio um, podcast a week, um, mainly because we've got fewer sound editors and we've got video editors. Um, so that kind of underpins the, the content. Um, we've got the video podcast version, the audio podcast version and the written interview when we do the full kind of suite of, of publishing in that respect. And that's, that's a lot of, there's a lot of work. There's hours and hours of, of work involved in that. So we've got people kind of behind the scenes re remotely doing that in their own time and kind of dipping in and out or doing it all in one block. So there's a lot of work kind of, kind of sort of lined up really. There's a whole queue of content that's kind of sort of sitting there. Um, some of which um, has been there for a while and some of which we manage to turn around quite quickly depending on who's available, who's interested um, in doing a particular interview, work on a particular interview, et cetera. So um, yeah, we've got a team of writers who I'll send them a list of films and ask if anyone wants to, to review one, if there's availability, capacity and interest. Um, most of the time when I send a film trailer out, one that we've been offered from a, a, you know, a PR company, most of the time there is you know, someone who's interested in, in reviewing that or, or doing, doing an interview on, on that. Um, which is just really exciting, if, especially if you see it, if I see a trailer, which I may not have time to watch the film for an interview for because I'm doing other things. It, it's just really exciting to think, oh, that trailer, I bet, you know, that person on the team would love to interview that person or maybe at least review um, the film. And when they do, I'm like really excited because I think I bet they're going to love that. And, and that's really rewarding for me to know that other people are as passionate as I am about sort of film and, and kind of get, a, get something out of it, it too, really. So. Where did your passion for film start then? It really started when I was a, a young kid. Um, I've always loved films. I think the, the main um, memory I've got really, which my mum and dad will always will always remember, was being in um, Cineworld Stevenage and um, watching, uh, I think it was Cineworld Stevenage, it might have been Hatfield Galleria, I can't remember now. My memory's a, a funny thing. <laughs> anyway, I was sitting in the front row of the cinema um, watching uh, Jurassic Park um, and I was next to, next to my dad and the main scene with the, T-Rex um, you know, kind of came on and um, I, I was, what was I, 11, 12 years old and I was, as the T-Rex obviously um, clamps down on, on the kids in the, in the car with his jaws and, and that massive roar, um, I was kind of sinking down in my seat, I almost fell off my, my seat because I was so kind of oh, in the first row, front row and a massive screen and a little kid and it was just, to me it was amazing and I don't know, ever since then I've kind of just, I wanted to from my own perspective, I'd love to create that experience for um, for somebody um, as a filmmaker, maybe as a writer, because I, I, I write. Um, but if I can't do that or I don't end up doing that, um, then I'd love I love to talk to um, fellow creatives who who are in a position to to do that. Um, so yeah, it's ever since I was a, a young kid, really. Yeah. The exciting thing about a, a podcast like yours is that you've got you know your kind of niche audience of filmmakers and writers. Uh, people who dream of, of being part of that kind of machine of the film industry. But then also so many people are interested in film and mm. love to get the insight of what's going That's on behind a, the scenes and the process yeah. behind it. There's in, in some, I mean, it's very exciting. It does it make it, um, I don't know, even more of a uh, challenge when you're doing the interviews and that you've got this really quite wide audience who all, mm have a similar but differing perspectives? No, that's a really good question, actually. I think um, I've, I've kind of um, focused more recently in the last year or two, um, I think in terms of the content, on aspiring filmmakers, film students, um, people who are in the same kind of position as me, I suppose, or have got to um, the first time filmmaker stage where they're starting to create films and um, very much want to appeal to, to all film lovers. And I think the maybe the written, some of the written pieces, some of the articles um, on the site uh, and the reviews that people are interested in may maybe appeal to them more. I think the interviews are um, probably more focused really on um, yeah, film students and aspiring filmmakers. I suppose that makes it a little easier to book your guests in when you really know who you're after then. Is it hard to 
I mean, obviously these people are pretty busy is it hard to pin mm. them down to a time sometimes you've probably got time differences to deal with as well yeah no that that's true um <clears throat> it used to be when I started out and there's a lot of a lot of people do when they're, when they're starting anything out I was sort of reaching out to other than other than actually the first two people who came on who reached out to me I think <laughs> other than that generally speaking I was reaching out to filmmakers who um I, I maybe I saw a trailer or something on on social media and thought oh that's interesting um I'll, I'll reach out to them but but actually we've kind of um got to a sort of process now where we're we're kind of sent um films from sort of filmmakers and, and publicists directly and then we get to kind of be selective i suppose um given the resources the limited resources we've got be selective about what we what we pick and choose really so um <clears throat> perhaps in in the best way of putting this perhaps when we're a bit bigger maybe more well known if that happens then um we will look to try and approach maybe some bigger names perhaps I, I don't know um but I think it's what I'd really like to say um it's important to me is of course I would love to be interviewing like Morgan Freeman or Leonardo DiCaprio that may or no, it may never happen but it's always going to be important to me and to our team that we're championing and focusing on indie filmmakers and, and people who are just sort of starting out to give them a voice um, to promote them and their creative work. Um, that's always going to be important, no matter how big or small we are, ultimately, yeah. For you, you've obviously, before you even started this, massively into film, you've been analysing it uh, for years. But the more interviews you do, the more interviews your team does, do you find that you're watching film in a more and more informed way and that you kind of can't just sit back and watch it as a viewer? Well, my, my background, um, well, my educational background is in uh, is English literature with creative writing and what you've just said kind of translates to that in that um, I read and analyzed so many books at uni that I couldn't read anymore when I really when I finished uni I didn't really want to read anymore because I was analyzing everything to the nth degree um, and actually I haven't found that with film um, I feel that film for me is more of an escape than anything else and I am actually able to immerse myself and get absorbed in a film without deconstructing it and analysing it in, in that way. So um, fortunately not. Um, I think I'm more aware of certain <laughs> technical aspects than I was before, perhaps, and have more respect and I have an idea um, as to what's involved, obviously, in the filmmaking process. But actually, no, thankfully, I'm, I'm able to kind of separate that and I'm still able to, to enjoy films um, and, and still not so much <laughs> books, to be honest. I actually listen to, to audio books more than I read now because I find that more immersive. Um, so... Yeah, that's a good point, though. Absolutely. <laughs> and going forward, what are your exciting hopes and plans for the podcast? Yeah, no, that's a that's a good question. Um, yeah, I want it to continue to grow and I want it to kind of become, I suppose, a hub for any creatives in the filmmaking industry to connect and progress their careers, champion them. Um, like I say, in the future, I'd be silly not to accept interview requests from people like Leonardo DiCaprio, Morgan Freeman, etc. <laughs> um, and yeah, and also it's kind of to develop, um, continue to develop my own skills and also the skills of uh, anyone who contributes. That's that's really important to me. Um, people are volunteering their time and, and, and voluntarily so, um, which is fantastic. But I, I think it's really important where I can to give something sort of back to them. So um, I have some um, sort of digital marketing and content creation skills, SEO, copywriting, that sort of thing, graphic design, etc. cetera. And, um, you know, I, I'm always offering um, my time to anyone who contributes if they they want to you know um, learn any anything that I've managed to learn in the last few years in my in my working career, um, if they want the opportunity to, to sort of learn some of those skills, which some of them have, uh, that's always there, and I, I want that to be the case ongoing um, where feasible, um, to to kind of give something back to them. Um, so yeah, but the, the bigger the bigger picture is I, I want to to grow the the platform so that it's kind of scalable and that more people can contribute and maybe I can. I don't have to maybe be involved in every in the majority of um, aspects of, of the site. So if I can basically find more people a bit like me, perhaps, which I already have, but even more so, um, then that would be amazing. So if there's anyone in the kind of um, filmmaking community who has some some time and is interested to perhaps talk to me or look at look at contributing in any any way, whether it's an hour here or a week, whatever they, they want, then I'm, I'm open to that, um, really. Yeah. How do they get in touch? Get in touch at uh, hello at film-forums.com and the website is film 
www.dashforums.com and there's a little team page there um, which gives you sort of a, a little bit of a flavour of to who's on the team currently uh, and what they do. Um, but there are actually others who are not on the website and um, for whatever reason who also contribute. So um, yeah, that'd be fantastic. It's so, it's so exciting. It's brilliant. It, it, I only have a, a little idea of how much work it is because my podcast is is pretty roughly sort of thrown together and that's <laughs> an enormous amount of work. So I can't imagine when it's all pretty slick and you've got lots of stuff going on every week and the transcription stuff is epic. So yeah, I mean, it just hats off to you and your team for managing to get it all done, really. Yeah, no, I'd like to echo that, really. Um, yeah, the transcriptions, I, I know, having done them single-handedly myself until last summer, um, <laughs> they take forever and um, it's so important and helpful. So um, I echo what you've just said, basically. Yeah. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on your favourite podcasting platform. Thank you.